Hi, I'm Michael Ruger. I'm the managing partner at Greenbush Financial Group. We had a big economic event today. Today is August 14, 2019. The main portion of the yield curve inverted today, which is a big deal for the economy. The stock market has re reacted very negatively to it. We have a lot of people asking, what does this mean? Like, why is the stock market reacting the way it is? So today I'm gonna go through what the yield curve is, why it's historically been a very good predicator of a recession in the past and what investors should be thinking about going forward. So the yield curve. So all the yield curve is, it's a plot of government bond yields at different durations. So it shows the two-year government bond yield, five-year government bond yield, 10-year government bond yield. In a normal, healthy economic environment, the curve is what's called positively sloped meaning the longer you go out in the duration of your bonds, the higher the yield is. So it's an example like if you go into a bank and you have the choice between buying a two-year CD or a 10-year CD, you would naturally expect that 10-year CD to give you a higher interest rate because the bank's locking up your money for 10 years instead of two. However, when there's an inverted yield curve in the bond market, essentially that 10-year rate ends up being lower than the two-year rate. So then you would naturally say, well, then why would someone buy it? Wouldn't you just buy the two-year at a higher interest rate and then get your money back sooner? The reason why bond investors will buy that 10-year bond at a lower interest rate is because they expect a recession to come sometime in the near future. And they realize as soon as that happens, Typically, the Federal Reserve will step in, start lowering interest rates, which means those short-term interest rates are gonna start dropping quickly. So even though the longer-term rates are lower right now than the short-term rates, they wanna lock that in for a long time period before interest rates begin to drop. And when you look at these inverted yield curves and how consistent it's been at predicting a coming recession, let's look at this chart. So this chart shows all of the recessions going back to 1975. So those gray areas on the chart, you see five of them, those show where the recessions happen. And then you see that line on the chart, that is the spread between the 10-year and the two-year treasury, so the slope of the yield curve. When the line is above the zero, or that solid black line, that means the yield curve is positively sloped. When you see it dip below that main line, that means you have an inverted, an inverted yield curve or it's a negatively sloped. So what you can see on this chart is, if you look right before the recessions, see how the line dips below the line? And it's almost, it's been very consistent at showing that in these instances, you get that inverted yield curve before the recession shows up. The next question then becomes, how much time do we have? Like from the time the inversion happens to the time the recession shows up, and I'm gonna show you this chart. So this chart addresses that question, and it basically shows those last five recessions, when the yield curve inverted in the first column, when the recession actually began in the second column, and then the lag time, how much time there was in between. So if you look at the last recession, on December 2005, the yield curve inverted, and the recession didn't begin until October 2007, so there was 22 months in between the two. But then if you look at the one right before that, the recession in the 2000s, there was only a one month lag time in between. So the yield curve inversions are a good predicator of a coming recession. What it isn't that helpful with is the timeline because the dispersion of the time between the inversion and when the recession actually begins is so great, it's really tough, tough to pinpoint like when that's going to happen. So what this means for investors is, it's been a very long expansion. Some of the indicators in the market that we've seen that have signaled caution from past recessions are start, starting to uh, flash yellow. So they have to really revisit their portfolio, revisit the risk levels and the risk asset classes they have in their portfolio, and just make sure that they're properly diversified. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button below. Thank you.